welcome back to a city planner place city builders where we are building the city of verde beach and we are looking at the downtown area along ocean avenue and uh taking uh gonna take it in some of the sites these are the this is the new area that we built in the previous episode i think it's it's doing really well and this episode we are going to continue to build out this area while uh, remedying some of the issues that we created in the last episode. You might wonder, what do I mean by issues? Well, uh, I looked in the comments and a lot of people had a big problem with Guppy Stadium being built here. And I get it. It's oversized for what this is, a, an Institute of Creative Arts. And I could make this the Institute of Sports Sciences and it still wouldn't make sense. It's a the asset's just too big, so I do think I'm going to demolish that and call a mulligan on all of that business. Um, it was just a little, uh, I think I might have gone a little wild there. <laughs> that said, uh, you know, it, it, it happens. <laughs> so either way, I'm going to continue the grid and I want to build this out just a little ways and keep things going. Okay, so now we have a little grid built. I'm going to connect this over to um, uh, Greenaway and uh, keep things keep things moving in that direction. Ooh, cannot stand what I just did to Greenaway there. So we're going to try to fix this. Okay, so I started with Greenaway to make that connection. That made it a much cleaner connection. And it, we're going to have some of those distorting problems if we don't start from Greenaway. So, again, more Greenaway fixes. And honestly, these, these roads get a little bit tight. I don't know that that would be a very palatable solution in most cases. That said, I do know some cases where things like, happen, like that happen. Um, sometimes you'll get a spite strip which is a little piece of land that due to whatever reasons, it could be dedication of right away, um, whatever, a developer ends up with a small chunk of land, a piece of land that's totally unusable based on the zoning code. And you know they're paying taxes on it. Let's say it's 500 feet wide and you couldn't do anything with that reasonably, but they still own it, control it. And for a long time, they just hold on to it and wait the city to use eminent domain to give them fair market value for it and if the city never gets around to that uh, you know it's probably zoned for egg land undeveloped not really all that expensive for the developer to hold on to but if the developer does get lucky and the city does want it they could make a pretty penny on it or another developer could want to consolidate it into their lands for instance so lots of reasons why they're they might want to keep this uh little spite strip and that's that's how those do come about existing okay so i want to make sure that i'm leaving enough space in between uh, all of our connections i don't want to connect up at all to this arterial except for collectors so that's why you kind of see some interesting decisions being made right here uh, that is to preserve uh, roadway hierarchy that's the the primary uh, driving factor there so that will lead to some interesting blocks over here kind of the end of the downtown area the grid kind of breaking down a little bit and that's completely fine Okay, so now we have this kind of established in this area, and uh, what I want to do at this point is continue to finish out my trail network. Uh, you know, I've, I've said this on multiple occasions, would a grid like this or this much infrastructure ever be installed by a city at once? No. But do you want to see me slowly do a block at a time? Uh, probably also a no. <laughs> so a plan like this would very likely be developed all at once 
And if a city were growing as quickly as Verde Beach, you might see this implemented in short order. So that's when, when I when you see me doing stuff like this, that's the way I'm imagining it occurring. Uh, hopefully, you're imagining it occurring in the same way with me. <laughs> At this point, I just want to provide some additional pedestrian options. These are going to be some significant block lengths where you can't reach that arterial, which is the most direct route to most places. So uh, I think it's good to not just provide those direct routes for, for motorists, but also for uh, future pedestrians. That's why you see me making these targeted connections. Okay, so one of the other things that was mentioned in the previous episode is I didn't do a very good job of uh, setting up this rail, uh, this rail uh, line. And, and truthfully, I know that I didn't do a great job. I'm not a rail planner, uh, nor will I pretend to uh, to be one on TV or anything like that. I am just someone who uh, is fascinated by it. <laughs> so. Uh, that said, I failed in a couple of ways. Number one, I want to provide connections, um, direct connections to the outside world for this, and then start to establish a third path for just uh, city-only traffic. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to try to mirror this, uh, this route that I put together. So I will use the freeform tool for that. Ooh. I'm going to pause this because I see that this bridge is no longer going to work for me. And I suspected that that could end up being a problem. At some point, I am uh, regretful that it's this soon, but not surprised. Okay, so there's one. I want to have three right now doing a very similar thing. So... I'll turn my guidelines back on and do this once more. Okay, so now I've got three parallel tracks. And so I think I'm going to use this outside track to connect up heading uh, whatever direction this is. Uh, maybe south, uh, southeast? <laughs> Next... I am going to take this track right here and separate it. And I'm going to have a parallel track meeting up with this station. And I want to sever, sever that station from the intercity network. So at this point in time, we might want to start thinking about grade separating these and uh, the reason uh, why is you can't have a crossing this close so I can try to put this here not gonna work so there are two ways to approach this the first way would be to to, 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 to bridge this rail over uh, it's unlikely that the rail company is gonna go for that um, they might allow a little bit of work to be done, but most likely they're going to request that the city does this work. Uh, so rather than having some big uh, overpass there, you're going to have either an underpass of the road or an overpass of the road. I'm going to take the approach of sinking this road. Okay, and when I said I was going to sink the road, I couldn't get it far enough down. And uh, as a result, I ended up doing a combination of sinking the road and raising uh, this rail crossing. And this just isn't as clean as I want it to be right now. So I'm going to do my best to clean this up just a little bit. Now, interestingly, we're going to run into the same issue again over here. Uh, this time, I think I am going to overpass the road. We're going to need to do something about that power line in just a moment. 
Let's finish up our train connection before we go on. All right, so that's taken care of. Got a little bit closer here than I'd like, but uh, it'll be like two ships crossing in the night if anyone crosses there, I suppose. All right, so I think I'm going to need to actually back this road out to make this work. And I do want to make sure that I'm not going any higher than I need to go because bridges are expensive. That said, I didn't go high enough. <laughs> so back to the drawing board. That's... Ah, uh, too high now. That, I think. Or is that as high as... Might just be what we have to do there. That said, that means we need to change up... Let's calm this down a little bit. Yeah, the game's not going to calm it down on its own. <laughs> so, we are going to finesse it. There we go. So that is a much longer bridge than I wanted to construct. But, I think to make this a little more passable, that might be the approach that we have to take. Okay, so I uh, am not in love with it, but I guess I'm in like with it. It's fine. <laughs> I would never accuse this of being perfect, though. Uh, it's just kind of a, a solution that we're going to have to deal with if we want to separate our rail connections, which I think we want to. I think that that's going to be really important down the line. Okay, so we've really done some stuff at this point to our roadway names. So I want to figure this out. Station Road, Scarlet Street, Scarlet Bridge. Now it's all Station Road. Perfect. Uh, Walnut Street loops. Uh, that's never a good thing. So I will uh, attempt to change that. We will need a new name for Smith Street in the future. Not a huge fan of that, but good enough for now. Ooh, we've got some water doing some things. Some things that I don't like. So let's get our utilities right. That said, so this area is now all public right-of-way, uh, assuming that it's a municipal-owned, um, or not municipal, but I guess a state-owned rail line. It's probably not, but... Uh, if we're crossing it, I guess it doesn't really matter where we're crossing it. We're going to have problems regardless. Because <laughs> you're working with the rail co companies. And, uh, you know, that's... They're lovely people, but they can be a challenge to work with. Um, and I'll leave it there. <laughs> so I think we're in a place where we can finally resume this and see what... Oh, yeah, we can see that I didn't make a connection. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done. I got overly excited. So much work over there that I never made the connection to the outside world. Uh, heading in the opposite direction. Ooh, that train did not like what I did. Okay, so we've got that. I think it looks a lot nicer. Oh, got to finish this bridge too. So I am forgetting lots and lots of things. But I'm catching them, so I will uh, consider that a positive. I'll take that as a win. What I will not take as a win is what I'm going to have to do next, which is basically rebuild all of this. I think I snuck this right in there. Yeah, that probably shouldn't have worked, but it did, and I'm going to take it. <laughs> oh, that is ugly. That is horrendous. So I really want this. This bridge is going to be very prominent. It's probably going to expand once more. And I want it to look good. It's not going to be... You know, it's not ideal to have this big bridge here. But if you're going to do it, it should look really good. So I'm not going to settle for anything less than 100% perfect. Okay, maybe I'll settle for 99.5% perfect. Because I think that this is a little bit off. But I still 
uh, it's good. It's good. I'm gonna. I'm, I'll take it. <laughs> so, um, one thing that I'm thinking about before we get to a whole bunch of zoning things, I really want to get some fences up along this uh, this arterial. So, let's just kind of look at some of the fences. We got park fences. Clearly, not an amusement park or nature reserve. The zoo fence is a little bit obscene in my mind. Not a farm. It's a little uh. A little scary. I do like the ore industry fence. I do think it fits in what we're doing here, but I, you know, I'll go with the park fence. I think it's probably the most natural fit. And I'm just gonna go up and down this road to make sure we don't inadvertently zone anything. So now I will not zone along this road inadvertently. It might not be perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here. And in the future, uh, I know that the zoning is not going to extend all the way to this road and that's completely fine. It's gonna be a noisy road and I don't want the zoning to extend all the way over here and uh, get people sick with sound pollution. Uh, and uh, you know, in reality, it, well, there's no sound pollution that gets people ill necessarily coming from a road. Maybe there is, but uh, I, not not in the way that the game represents it anyway. Uh, people do complain about that, and it, it causes them a great deal of distress. So having some sort of buffer here would definitely be appreciated. And it's just good planning. So I'm going to leave this... Um, this collector with uh, the ability to zone on either side of it, maybe some gateway, uh, we'll have some gateway type uses in that area. But I do have something special planned over here. So we get to the parkway. I don't want to zone in this area at all. I want there to be a natural transition between the neighborhood and the park in future college. I want there to be a lot of landscaping and a lot of trees. So you gotta remember, on the other side of this is this campus. So um, we should be aware of that and think about you know, that transition between uh, city type uses and some of the uses that we would expect to see over, over in the campus area or in the parks. I'm also going to continue building this nature reserve fence so we don't inadvertently zone along here. So this is going to bug me, so I'm going to fix it. So basically I was unable to connect that fence because the road was a little bit, it was uh, kind of interrupting what was my line of uh, connection. So as a result, I moved this just a little bit and now I can uh, continue to, to build my fence. So I think I am going to want to add one more entry point into this park. So before I forget about that, since we're adding the fencing, let's get to it. Get kind of a back way into this campsite area. Maybe we could have some commercial on this side so that people who were in the campsites could uh, venture out quickly and grab, uh, grab something from the civilized world. Okay, and at this point, you may be thinking that you've been watching a fence building simulator and not a city building simulator. And, you know, maybe you're not that far off. <laughs> I've certainly been uh, doing a bit of fence building. <laughs> so, uh, next, am I going to fill this zoning in yet? No, I'm going to keep you on the edge of your seats. We need some districts. Um, and you might wonder, why do we need these districts? Why we uh, keep doing all these things that aren't... Uh, building the downtown. Well, you gotta remember we have this citywide height restriction and the only way to, to eliminate that in these areas is going to be to, uh, to district these areas out and have a specific policy for those areas uh, eliminating the height restriction in those specific districts. So just something to be aware of I suppose 
So I am going to leave this area empty. I don't want to put buildings there because I know that at some point there's going to be train tracks. And in fact, I might just fill this in so I don't inadvertently zone. For the time being, I'll do something real messy that might upset some people. <laughs> so uh, if it does, I am deeply, deeply, deeply sorry. I'm also deeply sorry that with this view, I can tell that this isn't perfect. After talking a big game about how perfect that needed to be, that is too short of a, of a, of a, of a span down. I wish it was somewhere like right here. But I'm going to leave it because the last thing you want to do is see me do uh, correct more fences or add more fences. So I'll leave it for now and maybe uh, in a, at a later date I will improve that. That said, I'm going to get back to the thrilling work of adding some pedestrian paths. Okay, so now I, I, I know I said the thrilling work of adding some pedestrian paths and I said that mostly in jest, but I actually really like these paths and I think they're really important. And uh, in the future, I think that we're going to see incredible pedestrian activity in the city because we had the foresight of uh, really beefing up this pedestrian network, making it something special. And uh, a lot of places don't do that. So I'm going to continue building those. And I know that it's been a, uh, a relatively controversial decision. I read all the comments and I see that some of you absolutely hate those. And to that, I will say I'm very sorry. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> all right. So now districts and then we will zone. So I want to look at this and think about when things developed like I normally do. So there will be a district that kind of comes around here. I think I might do an, an ocean district in general. Actually, yeah, I am going to deviate from what I just said. I'm going to have an ocean district and we'll do the rest of the districts from there. Okay, in the next district, I think I'm going to look at the, the, the there's going to be a small district over here next to, maybe encapsulating this, uh, this transit hub. Maybe I'll go on either side of it, actually. This, these would be very related areas. You'd expect to see the same sorts of densities. And in this area in particular, I would expect very high densities. In fact... I, now that I'm thinking about, I'm going to cut down and take this, ooh, shaking district. That's exciting. Feels like it's dancing for me or something. I don't know why it's doing that. All right. Back to, back to normal. <laughs> okay. So now we've got this district. We'll make it the, ah, Hickory Central's. <laughs> The Central Station District. So I'm going to leave the rest of these districts uh, to you guys to name because um, we're certainly short some names. I might actually extend what is currently Crest Park back a little ways. Now that I'm thinking about it, I want to look a little bit at these roads. Uh, I want to make sure that we're maintaining our naming conventions while we're doing this since we're setting everything up. So we've got Guppy Way, that's gonna stay. Bass Street, that goes all the way, good. Sardine, we will connect Sardine up. Row Street, we will extend that all the way back to Hunter. This is gonna be a turn, so there's actually gonna, we're gonna need a number of street names there. Greenaway is broken, so we will fix that. All right, that looks correct again. And uh, I don't know that there are many other streets that we're gonna be able to fix right now. I guess Yellowfin, that one's correct. Pufferfish ends at the right place. All right, yeah, I think that's, oh, a little bit of Parker Street here. That shouldn't be there. Halibut too, so we'll fix that. Yeah, I think that's, so we're gonna need to do a lot of street naming very soon. 
but I don't have my street naming list up today, and uh, it's not on my list of priorities for today. We are going to take care of that, though. Probably in the next episode, which might be a short one, I want to get some of those natural disaster facilities in place and uh, really start thinking about disasters. We've had a number of them, <laughs> so it would seem that uh, we've been getting really lucky and luck runs out. Who knows? Uh, I'm still filming right now. Luck could run out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. Got a little, got a little, uh, a little excited there. Went a little bit too far. I'm going to do another district, kind of fronting the park. I'm thinking I want to do another uh, self-sustaining buildings district focused on this park area. Try to clean this up a little bit. The roads are, uh, the districts are certainly overlapping and getting very messy at this point. Just try to remind myself the functionality is what we're going for, not necessarily the beauty of the district. Uh, and then our last district is going to be kind of a bigger district in the back here. And actually, uh, it's going to be two districts. I'm going to go on either side of this collector. I think these are going to have different characteristics in terms of the forms of development that we're going to want. And over time, these districts could be divided further depending on where we want to target uh, density. Okay, so we have some districts. So I'm going to unleash density in this area. We do not want a high-rise ban. And in fact, I think we want to... Uh, we're, well, we have our free public transportation uh, policy here. I also think that we want to look at maybe starting our first metro line. Uh, now that we have stations available, I think we want to have a couple of, couple of stops. So what I'm thinking, a nice natural stop, would be near our park gate here, to be a couple blocks away, get some people to our park, and then another one would be near our uh, near our district uh, that has leisure and uh, um, so near our leisure and entertainment districts. So unfortunately, that means that we are going to have to use eminent domain to take some properties. I believe. Yeah, we can do that right here. Try to minimize our, our taking, but still, we're going to have to do it. Now, I'm spacing these fairly far apart from one another to ensure that they're fast. I want this to be a preferred method to taking a vehicle, and that's the way that you ensure it, making these uh, routes direct fast and minimizing curves like this, this is not ideal. The uh, subway will, uh, it'll have to slow down right there. Okay, so let's look at that route. There's only one color that makes sense to me for this route and that's blue. We'll make that the ocean line. I like that. Okay, so let's double check. I just want to make sure we've got stops. We're good. So this will get people from Central Station down to this district and hopefully into our nature reserve to get some more visitors there because we still don't have visitors. <laughs> All right, so let's look at our zoning. We're finally in a position to do it, and I want to make sure that we are buffering any uh, residential uses, commercial uses, from the sound that will be generated from these rail tracks. Also, uh, for the most part, from this road, if the zoning gets too close. So you're gonna see me, I'm gonna have a pattern where I'm doing this routinely. And I think even along here, I might just avoid it for the most part. Kidding. I'm not going to avoid it. I actually think it's going to be neat. So we're going to do that. Uh, that said, I have no utilities here. So we're back deviating from our zoning plans and moving quickly towards utilities. And I need to finish my districts. Getting ahead of myself, I'm excited to zone. Probably as excited as you are to see this finally get zoned because I've been talking about it now forever. <laughs> so... 
<laughs> I get it. I feel the anticipation myself. So we're going to add some redundancy into our system and loop our water mains just in case. We have disasters out, so it's always a good thing in the game and it's good practice in real life. So we've got utilities. Let's finish up our districts. So again, I said I wanted this just as a policy. What self-sufficient buildings over here. And I'm thinking here... So in Crest Park, I also, uh, I'm going back and forth on this. I think I'm actually going to extend Pearl Hills into Crest Park very purposefully. I do not want high density buildings to develop along the park. I don't want the shadows casting into the park. I'm going to extend this over here, allow higher density buildings to develop in Crest Park, get rid of that high-rise ban and let things get denser there. Uh, that said, in Pearl Hills, I do think I want high-tech housing. Make that a little bit uh, nicer of a district in that way. And I think I might enable two that we've been looking at. So high-tech housing uh, over here as well. Just thinking of removing the high-rise ban. I don't think I'm going to do that for now. And I'll leave King Hills just completely generic. Uh, so I, I do want to look at city services. We're going to have some needs coming up. And we should be thinking about those needs. So it looks like our fire coverage is going to be a little bit lacking. So I think on Lilac Street, I'm going to put a fire department and a police department. Police station, not a department. And we might need a clinic in this area as well. Yeah, we will most certainly need a clinic. So this will kind of be our city services center in this area and it'll likely serve some of these uses over here as well you'll see that that for the most part co uh, fixes our coverage we are going to need something over in foggy square i might rely on the other side this kind of this weird kind of cut off area in the future for that maybe we'll have a medical campus or something that requires a lot of access uh, in the future and then we don't really have any Elder care or child care over here. So I want to make sure that we are thinking about that in this area. So we'll include the elder care there. And for child care, might try to get that to be a little bit more centrally located. I don't want to get rid of any trails though. We just built those. Bad form to go and build trails and then immediately, uh, immediately get rid of them. So I, I need some sort of death care. I'm not going to place that anywhere near the elderly population <laughs> I know that I did that before that'd be very upsetting very very upsetting and for schools I know that we're gonna need some schools so we're gonna pre populate some of these schools as well okay so now along this collector corridor I want to put the most intense traffic uh, needing generating uses and I want to make sure that I don't destroy my trails in the way of that I'll need to clean some of this up and everything back here is going to be uh, of a higher density variety so I think I'm just going to want to target some actually I think I'm going to also on my commercial districts here and I want to have not just self-sufficient buildings but also organic and local produce and I will have like a little uh, little cluster in this area a little, little uh, commercial area that will serve those sorts of organic and local produce needs I think it'll it'll be a nice transition I'm a little concerned. I'm just thinking about something again. Let's take a look at this this view shed and it has been blocked. This building right here. So let's take a look at our zoning while we're while we're at it. We didn't go low enough here. We didn't go far enough with our zoning. Truthfully, I think even here 
Probably not far enough. So let's see. That's much better. Much better. We got our views preserved. We are good. All right. Back to zoning. So one of the things I meant to mention at the start of the episode is that uh, I noticed that I had a whole bunch of the unique buildings unlocked because your unlocks are, are, are preserved with your save file. So I didn't want that to be the case with this build. I want to naturally to uh, naturally be forced to unlock some of these things. And that might mean doing some kind of funky things in the, in the future. And I think that's part of the fun of the game. So I have, if we go into here, I have a whole bunch of buildings that are now not unlocked. So I'll have to earn those if I want them. And I think one of those buildings is actually that stadium that I had over here. So uh, that would have protected me from myself if only that would have been available. So, oh, mist water in one area. So I'm also thinking now this central station district might be a neat IT cluster. I should have probably thought about this before a bunch of buildings developed, but I think I'm gonna do it before more develop. <laughs> and this will be kind of our silicon beach or something like that. And with that, I think I might just do a whole bunch of uh, these sorts of uses along here. So we don't really have any parks in, the, in this area now and I think before we zone everything, we need to start thinking about those parks. So uh, I want to have some small playgrounds worked into here where I can fit them. I'm going to have to take on a couple buildings here. Don't like that, but I think it's necessary. And we might want to actually remove some trails in a couple areas to get some of these larger parks in place. I should have thought about this up front. That's bad planning. Gonna disrupt the grid here and have a larger park. Look at some, let's look at some of our other facilities. A dog park is always valuable. So we'll include one over here. Maybe one over here as well. And then a botanical garden would be a really great amenity in this downtown area. Now, I, I, I normally wouldn't want to place this on the collector. Oh, I really don't want to place it on the collector. I don't know that I have a lot of good options. So it's either I don't place it now or I place it along the collector. I think I might deviate from hierarchy just a bit here. Actually, let's take a look at our topography. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to place it along the collector. We'll have one deviation. It'll be right next to this subway station, this metro station, so that'll help quite a bit. Kind of sprinkling in some parks around here. And then uh, I think in this particular area, we're going to want to sneak a road in just so we can zone some of these properties. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with a very little zonable area. For a whole two block stretch. Okay. Let's make our parks connections as best we can. Alright, so I think we're good there. I do think it would be nice to have. This is a really large block, so before everything develops here, I'm gonna add some parks connections, or some uh, trail connections through here, because this will develop. And then we won't be able to do it without tearing down a skyscraper, which is not all that reasonable. Or nice. <laughs> We're all about being nice here, so that's uh, going to be a guiding principle. Be nice to the citizens of the community. Now I'm wondering if I can make a connection to this basketball court. Let's see. I don't know that it works, but I think we're going to leave it there and give it a shot. Um, I will check back in on this later. We'll see. It, you know, it, it would be a pretty 
reasonable connection to make. Might try just one more time, getting it just a shade closer. And it looks like it's not connected, but that doesn't mean it's not. Ooh, getting a little bit of clipping there. Okay. So we're good there. What else? Let's take a look at our land values. They're creeping up here. Very good. And I think I'm going to do the thing you should probably never do, which is just overzone. I want this filled in. I know that I want the rest of this, for the most part, to be residential. Might add in a couple of, uh, maybe I'll have a couple commercial hubs over here. I'm going to add those. I probably need a couple of plazas as well. So I know I said uh, just put these paths in, probably shouldn't demolish them. Going to go right back on that. <laughs> And we will put in trails after the fact to make some of these connections with these plazas. Okay, I just kind of wanted to go through and make sure that there was connectivity to each of these parks. I think that that's a really important thing. Making sure that we're not going to isolate any of these parks and leave them kind of by their lonesome. Let's make sure that they're connected. So with that, I am going to finish zoning and then just kind of let this place, let this place rip. Let's get some population going. Here we go. So I see one thing I don't like that I think I'm going to call a mulligan on. And that is some of the uh, the density that's developing right along the, uh, the shore in front of the train station. It's such an iconic building. I don't want to hide it behind these monster towers. So I'm going to, to, to down zone it. Okay, so let's take a look. Kind of just want to see. So we're at about 25,000 population. So we've grown tremendously just in the last little while. And so what I want to do to kind of to, to round things out here is do a little bit of detail work, some little landscaping, things of that nature. This is a very popular building at this point, and it's not surprising. Think about the number of destinations you could reach, or origins for that matter, from this train station. And it's a, it's a, it's a real, there's a lot of transfer opportunities there. So it's, it's really an important, impressive building. I was just noticing that there are some junction issues. So the problem was that Sunset uh, was actually stopping just for a block and uh, that was creating lots and lots of issues so got that remedied and we're in a better spot now another priority road issue though Bash Street was not correctly uh, correctly prioritized now it is so I can change the signalization there so there's a signal at this, these two local roads, but I actually like this signal. It's gonna be a lot of pedestrian activity there. It makes sense to me. And I think we're in a good spot otherwise with signalization. Kinda of wondering where we're at with traffic. So 80% traffic flow. Some of that is likely due to those signals that we had. Another bit of it is this roundabout. Let's just make sure we don't have any weird junctions here. And it might now be time to start thinking about upgrading this roundabout, having some better entry and exit points. Hmm. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, removing that stop sign. <laughs> that's why we're having traffic backing up. So that's that's the one thing with 
having priority roads is you can sometimes inadvertently add stop signs and have lots and lots of issues because of that. Just kind of want to make a couple of targeted uh, enhancements. I'll use lane mathematics to fix this clover leaf up a little bit. In reality, I don't think we have to do that. People are smart enough to use their lanes appropriately, but this is the game, and we need to be uh, aware of the game if we're going to play the game. <laughs> so this could become a good candidate for a roundabout. Lots of traffic backing up, not a lot of traffic going in other directions. I think for the time being, I'm just going to place a stop sign there. There's just not enough traffic using this road to justify having a signalized intersection there. Truthfully, even this one isn't justified if it weren't for the pedestrian activity in this area. So the other thing we could do is we could downgrade this to a collector, but I think in the future this is going to be necessary, so I'm going to keep that as an arterial. Okay, so let, that cleared a couple of things up. You know, we're hovering around 80. That's pretty good. The main thing I'm worried about is when I see wholesale stops. And that tells me that I have an issue. So I know that I need to clean this roundup, roundabout up before I think about the university in this area. I don't want to have to encroach upon the university or get constrained, which is the more likely solution. I just wouldn't have enough space to actually do more work um, on this roundabout and would have to deal with this situation being what it is. So um, it also might be time to start investigating a better solution uh, entry solution into the city we're using the default that came with this area it's very steep kind of weird we're having some issues here we also have so i kind of i kind of went nuts here and and have a a four lane roundabout i might just take that down and see if that improves things and then add some sound walls near development it's overbuilding that creates more headaches with uh, lane switching. Confuses the AI. It's the last thing we want to do. And it looks like that kind of cleared things up a little bit. Back at 82% roundabout seems to be working a little bit better. Good enough for me. Okay, so on to the detailing, and that's where I think we're going to end things. Just want to put some landscaping and some trees to... Uh, to define this area just a little bit more. Okay, so we're not going to do everything today, but I, I did want to get a nice buffer along that road and some of the train tracks. The main reason for that is that's that sound uh, deafening. It, it, some of the, the negative, uh, noxious externalities you'd, you'd see coming from uh, you know, train tracks or things of that nature, you would mitigate by having a pretty dense wall of foliage and that is exactly what I've done in fact I might have gone a little overboard and created a, a forest an urban forest but you know if you were looking in look at that that's nice that's exactly what I want to see this makes this is a besides being a roller coaster fairly exotic that's exciting <laughs> so I like it I like it a lot um, so with that, I think this is where I'm going to leave it today. We have increased our population significantly, about 7,500 people, and really started to, to define the downtown area. But what we're missing is unique buildings. We're going to need to, to think about those soon and uh, really start to define the downtown east of uh, this main arterial, uh, Keller House Avenue really start to think about what goes over here and maybe some of those unique buildings will go over here we're also going to need to think about what we do with areas like this 
that are really uh, likely going to be very isolated from the city. So this might be a good place for an office park, uh, maybe some a TV station, for instance. Um, things that need good access, want visibility, but don't need direct access and maybe don't mind all of this because <laughs> there's a lot going on. So with that, uh, I will have a brief cinematic at the end of the episode, uh, kind of going through some of these new areas and a brief tour of the old part of the city as well, so you know what's going on. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, hit that notification bell and you will find out right away. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.